pi. So in this short video, we're going to discuss invasive arterial pressure monitoring. So the components of invasive arterial pressure monitoring include the arterial cannula itself. This is connected to a column of fluid, which is either 0.9% saline or heparinized saline. This is then connected to a three-way tap, which allows for zeroing of the arterial line set. The fluid column then comes into contact with a diaphragm, which is in turn in contact with a transducer. The transducer converts a pressure signal into an electrical signal. The set is also connected to the flush, with the manual flush button being here, and the rest of the flushing set being connected up to a pressure bag, set to a pressure of 300 millimetres of mercury. So now we will discuss the mechanism of action of the arterial line set. So the pulsatile pressure within the artery will result in a back and forth motion of the 0.9% saline within the column. This pressure is transmitted to the diaphragm, which then in turn creates pressure within the transducer. There is the presence of a Wheatstone bridge within the transducer. The Wheatstone bridge is made up of four resistors. Two constant resistors, a variable resistor, and an unknown resistor. Changes in resistance are measured electronically, and this signal is converted to display systolic and diastolic blood pressure. The flushing mechanism here allows 3 to 4 mils per hour of saline to flush the line to prevent clotting and backflow. There is also the ability to flush the set manually. The majority of the time, the arterial cannula is inserted into the radial artery. In 95% of patients, there is collateral flow between the radial artery and ulnar artery via the palmar arch. The information gained from the arterial pressure monitoring set includes the heart rate, the pulse pressure, the presence of a respiratory swing, stroke volume and vascular tone. Thanks for watching this video.